they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the spots no frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianni Mani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building today? It's good, y'all. It's artists, man. We here. It's art now, is it artists or is it the artists? So, it's... it's the artist, but I'll just like to say artist for short. You know? Okay, it's artist with a dollar sign, just in case you're looking. All right, so before we get into it, we're going to do a quick round of rapid fire questions. So I'm going to ask you some questions and just give me the first answer that comes to mind, okay? All right. All right, Zodiac sign. Libra. Favorite number. Three. First initial of your first love. N. Favorite given nickname. Stink. Describe your type in three words. Damn, I don't got a, I don't know, a smart Lawyer, you got your own money. <laughs> got your own money. Okay, we're going we to just pretend like that was my all right. <laughs> um, one word to describe the music industry. Crazy. Studio must have. Blue lights. Hmm. Three artists that you will go on a road trip with. Scissor, Summer Walker, and Brent Fires. Oh, no. See, I'm an R&B girly, and you did your big one with that. That would be a lit-ass road nah, trip. Facts. Okay, go to brunch order. Go to brunch order. Mm -hmm. uh, French toast with the with the turkey bacon, some eggs. Okay, so regular breakfast. Are you a Bellini or mimosa? Give me a mimosa. A mimosa. I love oh, a Bellini. Champagne. One drop. One little. One little yeah, drop of orange juice. Nice. Okay. Dream destination. Like Bali. Dream. Okay. One item on your bucket list. Um. Oh damn! Damn I. What's something that you really want to do that you haven't gotten to do yet? I'm scared, but I'll jump out of a plane. Oh, I'm terrified to jump out of a plane. No, I think that's, that's I would do it. Yeah, I agree. That's on my bucket list too, but I just don't know how I'm going to muster up the courage to do it, to be completely honest. All right, something you can't leave your house without besides a phone and keys. My wallet. Oh, <laughs> something you can't leave your house without besides a phone, keys, and your wallet. My glasses. Okay. <laughs> I can't see. But you can't. I was just about to say, you can't see without them. All right, fine. You got that one. Favorite thing about your hometown? Um, We represent. Like, you know, we from where we from, man. Big Nook shit. I could say that about anywhere, but all right. Nah, yeah, I think that's it. Like, I feel like everybody from Nook, like, you know. Like, I'm, I'm from Nook, bro. No matter, like, the Is that something you that you say? Like, you know how people, like, when you get into it with somebody, like, people like to always say, like, I'm from Brooklyn. Fuck out. Like, do yep. y'all do, do that? Like, I'm from Newark. Fuck you yep. about. <laughs> what is, like, Newark's, like, fuck is you talking about? Say that again. Like, you know, like, New York, like, we talking our shit. Like, fuck you talking about? Yeah. What do you, what do y'all say? Same thing, like, fuck, nigga. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck, nigga. <laughs> okay. And Thanks. finish my sentence. 2023 is the year for us, man. Big intro shit. Period. Okay. That was a nice that was a nice little icebreaker. Okay. So we gonna get right into it. Right. We are halfway through the year at this point. Like, let's do a half year check-in. How are you feeling? All right, we're gonna go in order. How are you feeling mentally? Mentally, I'm 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 getting way better from where uh -huh. I was in January, from January to now. Uh, okay, that's great to hear. Yeah, we just came off of Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm definitely a very big mental health advocate, not only for others but for myself too. Um, so I love just checking in with people, making sure that they're good. I know you put a lot of like your experience into your music. You're very open about talking about your experiences. So just to hear that you are in a better place now, I love to hear that. Thank you. Um, how are you feeling in terms of your career like your songs are taking off your music is doing this thing how are you feeling because we're gonna get into the specifics nah, but overall how are you feeling i'm feeling great man a lot of like first time things happen so far and we only in june so i'm feeling good excited for what's to come so keep working okay sure. and then socially how are you feeling about your social life friendships relationships I'm feeling like things changing a little bit socially because i feel like i gotta distance myself from certain things in order to not have my career be fucked with in any way, you know? Mm -hmm. Just Finding taking that. a break from from that life to really focus and hone in on the music. So you locked in right now. You Dumb and Grandma. Stupid. Are you outside thing. this weekend? Because it's Juneteenth weekend. I hope you at least yeah, you I'm, dedicate I'm, one day to pop out real nah, quick for, for our sure. people. Coach For man. our people. Pop, okay. Pop low, All right. Well, that's good. So let's start from the beginning. You into you getting into your artistry. What is like your first 
music memory that you have thinking about childhood or growing up when you think about how music impacted you as a child, what's the first thing that comes to mind? My first music memory that mm -hmm. I can remember it would be like, I always loved to dance when I heard any kind of song. But my, my family has videos of me singing on the mic before I'm like one and two years old. So mm -hmm. I don't remember it, but, but yeah, I remember like just always dancing. Like no matter the song, the genre, I'm going to dance. Like I, I didn't start off singing. Like I started off dancing. You started off dancing. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. You were dancing. Were you giving like I'm performing in talent shows dancing, or was no, it just like what? family friends? Every party or cookout, they know who to put in the middle. Man. And it was you. I was wilding. What? So where did this trend? First of all, okay. I was losing it. <laughs> so you were dancing. It's so crazy. I feel like I don't really see that now. Yeah, I'm working on showing that. Sound, yeah. Man. Okay. So hidden talent is what it's giving. So when did you transition from being the dancer to then being the artist, being the singer? Oh, I just always enjoyed like doing a lot of covers. Like I got some old videos on YouTube. Y'all ain't gonna be able to find them, so don't look for them. But when I'm singing like a lot of covers to songs that I loved at the time, so. Mm -hmm. I think it just all just meshed well together. Like, I love to dance. I love to sing. Like, as a kid, you know, you're doing everything. But as I got older, I really was into basketball for real. So I didn't really do the singing thing until, like, 2018. That's when I really was like, all right. Okay. I'm gonna give it a shot. So you were playing basketball. Was it like a hoop dream type basketball or you were just doing it while you were in school? Nah, facts. Hoop dreams. I thought hoop I was dreams for real? WNBA. What? So what was it that, what was like your realization moment? Like maybe this is not what it's hitting for? I had to get surgery on my shoulder. It was over with. After I played, after the surgery, I'm like, yeah, nah. But look at you now. Like, like I, I literally say this all the time. I feel like a I'm lot done. of times, like when I'm speaking to people about like how they got into their careers, it's always like a, well, I was initially thinking I was going to do this or I was supposed to be doing this, but then something happened that kind of like made me pivot and go into something else. No, so thanks. I hate that you had to have surgery, but I love that you're here now and you Same. were able to tap into your music. Same. So when you were doing covers, when did you actually get into the studio? Uh, it was 2018. My friends kept, kept telling me, like, yo, you should, like, go to the studio, go to the studio. So my friend had took me to uh, one of her friend's crib. He had, like, a studio in the crib, mm -hmm. like, 2018. And I did a, a remix to Quickie by Miguel. That was Love the first that. song I ever recorded on a microphone, in a studio, engineered, everything. I think it's so interesting that um, you mentioned Quickie because... One of my favorite songs of yours is Procrastination. And when I was listening to it, it kind of gave me a Miguel type of vibe in the way that you would like. It was just the delivery. It really did remind me of Miguel. So it's funny that you, you mentioned that. I didn't even think so, of it. So um, you said that. So you got in there. You did, the, you did the cover. How were you feeling? Like, was this like, okay, yeah, I could really take this serious. After yeah. that first two session, or what, what did it give? Like, I was like mad blown away about the, like, the way I sounded in the headphones. Mm. I'm like, oh, this shit sound cool as hell. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did that, and then um, I started just finding a couple studios in the neighborhood, going there. But then I had stopped for a little bit because I was like playing college ball at Essex County College in Newark, so I couldn't really do both. Okay, period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So no, sorry, did I cut you off? No, nah, you good. Okay, so now when it comes to your name, so I was telling my mom that I was interviewing you, and she asked me if your name came from or if it was inspired by Prince, because <laughs> I, 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 I personally <laughs> didn't know that Prince, like up until like two thousands, he called himself like the artist formerly known as Prince or the artist. I didn't know that shit either. Yeah, I really didn't. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, I don't know, but I'm going to ask when we speak. So it wasn't influenced by him. No. Nah. Okay. So were you listening to, like, who were you listening to? Um, wait, first, how did you get your name? What is, so, what is, what is, what is my that? actual name is Erica with a C, by the way. That was the best way to spell it. But mm -hmm. I started off as Erica the artist. And then I said, fuck it, I'm going to drop the first name because, like, I feel like art is just who I am. Like, I like to paint. I like the sand, like the draw. I just, I'm just into anything art. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the artist just represented me as a person. So and the dollar sign is very important. You know, man. Um, I need my cheese. Man. The dollar sign is very important. I mean, yes, that too. But also when it comes to just finding you, because when you yeah. look up the artist, you know, there's so many. But I think that that sets you apart. So there's only one artist that I know of with a dollar sign, um, which makes you stand out for sure. So you, like I you. was saying before, like, who were you listening to when you were growing up? So you were doing these covers. So clearly you were listening mm -hmm. to people. Whose covers were you doing? I did a cover for Justin Timberlake, 
I did a Mary J. Blige cover. I did a Chris Brown cover. Um, I'm like the top three I can remember. And then I used to just be looking up beats on YouTube mm-hmm. and just saying, just singing or rapping. Did you have like a go to artist that you like, whose music you like to cover, or like a go to song mm. that you like to sing? Push a Love Girl by Justin Timberlake. Hmm. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite ones. When I was in high school, that's all I listened to. So did people ever like go up to you like sing right now? Like or once they found out that you can and that would be the song that you would go to? Nah, I would sing one of my songs now today, but no, back, back I'm then. Talking about oh, no. like when you was first getting started. We still in the uh, early stages of the artist. When I was first getting started, people ain't know I could sing, so they didn't know I was singing, so they never asked me that. Huh. Yeah, nah. But okay. when, like So at post twenty eighteen. When Best Part came out by uh, Daniel Season and Hurt, mm. um, when somebody would ask me to sing, I'll sing that song. That's a good one. Yeah. You starting it with Daniel Caesar verse or are you going into her verse? Which one? Uh, I'll sing Daniel Caesar mm. uh, verse. Yeah. That's a that's a real good one to pick. Yeah. Okay, so did you did you grow up in like a musically inclined household? No, no. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I don't have no family members that like do music or anything that's like above me, like my mom or my dad or nobody. No. Mm-hmm. So when you decided that this was something that you wanted to take serious, what was like the feedback that you got from your family? I mean, I never really like publicized it for real. Like it was always something I just did. Like I would like if they would call me while I'm in the studio, I'd be like, yeah, I'm in the studio. And I would send them songs and they love it. Like my family, my, they support me. My siblings, my mom, mm-hmm. they support me. They know all my songs, even the unreleased, they know all the lyrics, so. Okay, so you have a good support system. Yeah, I love that for you. Down. So now you also, so in speaking of support systems, you also have or seem to have a very good team. You what? shout out Fame. The best team, man. You shout out Fame in interviews. You retweet Fame on Twitter. Like That's it really seems dog. like y'all really locked in. You was like, yeah, my my first and only manager. Yeah, so nice family for real. I love that. And I love like when you can move on one accord with your team, which is exactly. really what seems like is happening. How important do you feel like it is to have a team where you're all on the same page? I feel like that's probably the most important part. Like I feel like you could have the talent, you could have the drive, but if your team ain't locked in with you, bro, mm-hmm. you might as well kiss it goodbye for real. And how did you even wind up linking up with him? So one day I was on Instagram and I had um I was already, I had followed Fame, mind you, like a couple weeks before she posted, like, send, send songs. So she had posted, she does this thing called intro sessions. Mm-hmm. So at the time, I wasn't really sure what it was. I'm thinking that if you submit a song, you can win free studio time. <laughs> okay. I swear, like, that's what I'm thinking it was. So Okay, so you had your eye on the prize. You feel right me? I, uh-huh. I submitted my song, um, Secrets, at the time. I submitted it or whatever. She ended up following me on the gram. She DM'd me like, yo, you tough, blah, 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 whatever. So... Um, I got the address to the session. I went. It's mad mm-hmm. people. I'm like, what yeah. The fuck up? It did not give what she was. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, so uh, I went inside the room. It was fame. It was a, it was a few people in there, and I just played some music. And um, the next day, she had me in the studio. So, were you looking for like management at the time, or did it just kind of happen to fall into place? It fell into place because like I like at the time, I just was just in the studio, like just making mad songs. Like I had no idea of what I where I wanted to go with it, what I wanted to do. I just knew I loved doing it and I would spend my last to do it. So mm-hmm. that's really what I was doing. Okay. So when I met Fame, it just was like, wow, look at God. Right. So shout out to Fame, of course. Fame. Um shout out to Encho, shout out to my boy Andy, the whole fucking the squad, whole team. Man. Yes. So Thanks. when it comes to now being signed, you're independent so right? Mm-hmm. Do you are you interested in signing to a label? Are you shopping around? What you doing? Nah. Me no, you like your boy Brent. Because you, you shouted out Brent earlier. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he's going Staying crazy. independent for now or staying independent, period. Yeah, I mean, whatever, you know, as, as time goes on, like, if it makes sense for me and my family and my team, then it's something that I would consider. But right now, like, I'm just thinking about what's best for the people that's around me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know... I don't know if you saw when um, Scarlett was on Vlad and he, Vlad was interviewing Scarlett and basically was like walking her through, take two, walking her through the process of being signed and like what it looks like beyond just the dollar amount that you're giving. And she really didn't know that that was like actually how it was because it it was very clear that nobody sat down and actually broke it down to her. So I think that if 
you have a team that's working for you and you doing what you need to do and you're getting the results that you're looking for, if it's not broken, why fix it? You know, so if it comes up, it comes up. But in the meantime, you're doing your own thing. You're staying independent. Okay. So what kind of music do you listen to, like, on your free time? Outside of your own. A lot of R&B. Like, I've always listened to R&B. I love R&B. I listen to some rap, some hip-hop. I Mm -hmm. listen to some... Pop, some funk, some. I just don't listen to rock. That kind of hurt my ears, but like scream country. <laughs> yeah, but you don't R&B. listen to Paramore. You give me what? like you would listen to Paramore. What? Okay, yes. okay. Because you said no rock. Paramore kind of fit in that category too. No. Okay, so who's like your top five artists right now? Um, right now I'm gonna go Summer Walker. I'm gonna go Scissor. I'm gonna go Brent. <laughs> yes, love him. I'm gonna go her. What's that for? Mm-hmm. You got one more. Yeah, I'm gonna go myself for number five. Don't do that. Okay, <laughs> you're right, 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 right. Give me another one. Um, let's go Mel. Mm, I'm gonna go Chris Brown. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I'm very happy to hear that Summer Walker was at the top of your list because I really wanted to get into the BET R&B nominees for the awards. You know, the awards are coming up this Mm -hmm. weekend. Um, Have you taken a look at the nominees? I did, but I can't remember off the top of my head the order. For the R&B, they had SZA, um, Thames, who, um, her... Names are not coming to me, but really, Summer Walker Damn. was not on the list. Um, I can't think of the other people. And Beyonce was on there. Can't think of whoever else was on there. But Summer Walker was not on there, which I thought was crazy. Yeah, that's insanity. Um, Damn, you know that. Especially because she dropped a project. Like, I, I personally just don't understand what the criteria is for these nominees. I'm still learning. Um. <laughs> Likewise, but I think that Summer Walker has been doing her big one, so I was very surprised not to see her on the nominee list. She performed last year at the award show, I believe. Um, I also think that Beyonce being on the list is like a given. That's queen, that's mother, but... I can't tell you the last time I've seen Beyonce at a BET award show. Yeah, nah. So I feel like if she's going to be I on agree. the list, they could have put, you know, somebody else on the list. Yeah. So Summer Walker aside, is there anybody else that you feel like would have been worth a spot on the R&B nominees for the um, BET awards? Let me think. Let me think. Ooh. I have another one in mind, too. I would say... Dang. It's not clicking right now. Uh, Mo- Mooney Long? Yeah. I'll give it to her. Okay. For sure, get one. I agree. Um, I feel uh, like... Oh, my fault. Who else? Go ahead. Jasmine Sullivan. Even though, like, you know, but Jasmine Sullivan. Um, Jasmine Sullivan will always do her big one. I personally feel like when I saw that they put Usher in... Usher, once again, like like I said about Beyonce, your spots are solidified, but I feel like Usher dropped one song this year. I have I can't remember. Like it's probably time. because he's going on that crazy tour right now. He like, is wilding, going. So he is probably, in Vegas probably, going crazy. Probably picked up his stream in OD. He is in Vegas going OD, crazy. So. I don't know. I also think that Tank should have been nominated. Ooh! What I definitely hell yeah. feel like Tank should have been nominated. I told um, coming though. They did my sister going dirty. Grammy, watch. But like, do you think? So as an artist, as the artist, um, how do you feel about nominations for award shows? Like, is that something that you feel like if you aren't nominated, is that discouraging? Is it something that pushes you to go harder? What's your perspective on that? I feel like it can be discouraging depending on the work you put in. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you put in the overtime and you're going crazy and people is locked in, tuned in, and you don't get nominated, like, it's like, damn. The mm-hmm. fuck else do I gotta do? You mm-hmm. know, but okay. also too, I just feel like when you know in your heart that you number one, a domination certain all to that. Mm-hmm. And I also like when artists are they take it as constructive Hell yeah. feedback because recently too, um, 
I think it was like JT had posted something on Twitter saying that they was getting back in the studio or something like that. And somebody was like, ever since the City Girls like came out, like all of their music sounds the same. Like there hasn't been any growth. Like, so what could you possibly be doing, basically? And she was like, we're going to get back in the studio until we get it right. That's all you can do. And so I love when like artists take moments like that. Like, okay, maybe I didn't get nominated for this. But maybe that's because I'm not making enough noise. So let me make sure I do something mm-hmm. bigger to actually catch, capture their attention. Right. Um, okay, so when it comes to your music, what is your favorite song of yours? Um, it's actually unreleased. It's called Frustrated Love. I'm going to give you all that title. I'm not going to tell y'all where it's at. Frustrated but. Love. Mm-hmm. You say you're not going to tell us where it's at. Yeah, like um, on the project, I'm not going to tell you the order. But Frustrated Love, that's like... Yeah. I got a lot of music that I love of my own, but that one right there, that's OD. Okay, Frustrated Love. Now, out of the songs that are out, if somebody were to come up to you and you had like one second to give them a song to take away so that they could listen to you in the car, what song are you giving? What song sober. Are you giving? I'm giving them Sober Hard. You did your big one with Sober, for real. Giving them Sober, easy. Sober is such, uh, I mean, I'm sure you already know, you've heard it, but you Thanks. really did your thing with Sober. I feel like Thank there's you. so much emotion, there's so much vulnerability. It's so real, it's relatable. Thanks. I mean, I feel like that song really just like, if you've been there, you know. <laughs> but yeah, guess yeah. what? Like, I could live, sleep, I could live, Everything. I could eat. I'm doing my thing without you. So we tried it, it didn't work, but that's fine because I'm still moving no, I'm on. Good. Um. And one thing about Sober too, I used to be like early high school years going on YouTube so I could be in my bag listening to like Paula DeAnda and B Major and Auburn. Mm -hmm. You put me in that feeling, like that early like 2000s, like I want to listen to something that's going to make me get in my feels or I want to listen to something that's going to talk about my last heartbreak but still be in my lover girl bag. Um, How do you, what is your creative process like? Like, how do you come up with the concepts for your music? Um, Lately, it's just been based off pure uh, experiences. Like, but first though, like when I go in the studio, I got to hear a beat that make me feel like, and whatever that beat make me feel, that's what I sing about. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, the beat going to make me feel like something about love or something like that. Because that's just where I am right now. That's what I'm getting Mm -hmm. out. That's you know Mm -hmm. i'm I'm healing okay so when it came to something like sober how far along were you from that situation when you started writing that song oh yes yes okay yes yes so it had some time to marinate before you wrote about it and the crazy thing is like like i didn't like like write that song when i went in the studio it like literally came off the top of my head that's how i had to write it afterwards like I had to write down my lyrics afterwards, so I won't forget them. But yeah, I just you know, and also too, it has a lot to do with me getting more comfortable too, like with my sound and where I'm at in my career. So it was really easy to get through that song. Like, mm-hmm. It didn't even take me like an hour to do that. So after it came out, it started gaining this traction and everything. Did Shorty, who the song was about, reach out to you? Oh no, no. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it felt. I always think about this. Like, if someone were to make a song about me, I don't know if I would acknowledge it or just leave it where it's at. A song like that, I probably would leave it where it's at just based yeah. on what it is. I probably wouldn't want to claim that. But are there other songs that you've written about, like, prior experiences that people have reached out to you, like, oh, yeah, I know this is about me? No. Nah. No? Mm-mm. Hmm. Is it because of the way that the situation ended or just they just don't? Yeah, I, I feel like it got to be the way situations ended because, like, there's no, what are we talking about? Don't ask me no questions. That's how I be feeling. <laughs> so I feel like for you, like, you give me very chill vibe. Like, I really hate what I, like, feel like has happened to you through your relationship journey. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I wouldn't wish that on you. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. But where, how, where are you, where would you say that you are in terms of, like, where you were in that place relationship-wise versus what you, how you present yourself in a relationship now through your experiences? I feel like I'm more... Mm. I'm more open now than I was before. Crazy to say, because you would think that somebody would be they more would like close you, close in, yeah. them. But I'm more open because I feel like 
if people know certain things, then they'll know not to do certain things, you know? So I try to just go into situations open, honest, and just, you know, letting people know things that I've gone through or where mm -hmm. I'm at right now, what I got going on. And, yeah. Okay. And even outside of your relationships, once again, going back to the vulnerability and just putting your experience in music, you also wrote a song, Dear Brother, which mm -hmm. was... Only my dog. Yes. And you made it very clear, you know, four L's for life. You had the snippet at the yeah, end, four L's for, for life. Um, what is the importance of putting your actual experiences into your music for you? I feel like because I'm in the R&B lane right now, it's very important because we can't get away with just saying anything or singing about anything. We kind of got to be intentional with what we put out there. Mm -hmm. That's how we gain true support. Like outside of the strings and everything, I just gen generally and genuinely want to help people heal from things. I want people to know like I'm just like you. Like It's going to get better. Like I just want to be that example for people, you know? And I think it does it's give important. that. Mm -hmm. I think I think you exude that and I think seeing you perform live like when I saw on on the radar, I saw you posted on your actual page like when you were posting you had the the band behind you and there were people in the comments that were like, "Wow, like this actually like touched a part of me or like yeah. I'm crying watching this." Crazy or like crazy messages, man. I mean, like I think that that's very big and I personally cannot wait for your tiny desk episode because I already know it's going to be all of that. It's going to come soon. It's going to be all of that. Because because you have like the perfect voice, you have the perfect vibe thank for you, a tiny desk. Um, and you said that people have been saying crazy things. So you read DMs and comments and all of those? I even respond to people, yep. Really? Mm -hmm. I began like long messages, homies in jail, like, yo, it's crazy, but how does that feel like for you to like for you to know that first of all, this was not even the lane that you were gonna go down originally and you're affecting the lives of so many people? How does that feel to you? It's still surreal. Like, I still have a hard time taking it all in because everything just been happening so fast. But, man, when I think about it, it's, it's beautiful to me. Because, mm -hmm. like, damn, bro. Like, it's so dope that people feel like they could come to me and talk to me. They don't even know me. And they telling me life stories. But it's because I made them feel comfortable enough to want to do that, you know? Don't, they don't ask me for nothing or nothing. They just literally either want advice or they just want to let somebody know what they went through. And, and I mean, I think that it's great that you're taking it in that way, but I feel like at some point it can also get to be a lot mm -hmm. because sometimes I think that there is, there's a point where it goes from sharing and getting advice to dumping, especially if it's, if you're getting a lot of it. So how do you separate the time that you take to respond to the people that are reaching out to you and the time that you actually take to get your mental right? Um... I don't do it like every single day. Like mm -hmm. I don't respond to people every single day. I don't read them every single day. Cause we do like I do need that personal time to just unwind and right. chill. So yeah, I don't do it often. I feel like that's that's you just do it when you up to it. When you in a yeah. when and when you have the mental capacity to take in what Literally. people are saying. Yep. Okay. So yep. of course, I mean you reading stuff. What is the craziest thing that somebody has sent you? Yo, they be sending What's me he? voice notes singing the song. <laughs> like, like, yo, but like, it'd be so Wait, funny. Because now you're saying it's funny, so I'm thinking they can't sing. The vocals yeah, don't yo, be. It'd, it'd be. It'd be crazy. No, yo, like, yo, I just want to know what would make you record yourself, listen back to it, and hear that you can't sing, and send it to somebody who can't. Yo, they be sending me hella voice. They sing the whole song. And what you say back? Fire emoji. <laughs> I got show love, man. I get support. <laughs> it's the thought that counts, I guess. Okay. Oh my god. But what like so no crazy DNs, no crazy like Yeah, I had this one dude tell me he was in jail and he heard my song while in jail and his song influenced him to write a letter to his girl. Mm. But yeah, I gotta go damn, I, I, I wouldn't okay. even know what to find it at, but yeah. So you you clearly you have reach. They listening to yo, you in a pen in a bag. I'm like yo, how? <laughs> like how did you even hear that? Anymore? No, you'll be surprised because these days I be going on lives on yeah. TikTok and Maybe seeing niggas dead. in jail so, on live. Yeah, cool. So just know that they listening. You exactly. you got an audience across the board, and I love that for you. Now, even speaking of audiences, you just opened up for Dende, his first ever headline tour in Brooklyn. How was that? Let's talk about it. It was a beautiful experience. It was nice and intimate. Um, 
a lot of people that were there, they didn't know that I was going to be performing. So when they found out I was performing, like they come, they came up to me afterwards, like, yo, like I actually listened to you and I and I fuck with you. So it was like a plus to even see me there. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, performing was great. The crowd, they were very focused in, and I, and I, I love that. Like normally, like I, when I do bigger shows, be talking in the background kind of throw me off. Mm -hmm. but, Everybody literally was like, it was like all eyes on me kind of thing. It was nerve wracking, but man, I'll go back to that night. Really? Like, it was beautiful. Like, yo, the vibe was amazing. The band was crazy. My guitarist, my DJ held it down. So I love that. Me. Do you always perform with the same, the same um, musicians? I that, that was actually my first time performing live with a guitarist. Okay. Did they show? So I'm gonna. I'm moving forward. Yeah. I mean, it all it all depends on where I'm at. Like a lot of my shows. Maybe somewhere that they can't get to. So, mm -hmm. but I would like to though. Yeah, like, I would. I'm, I'm right now. I'm currently looking for my, you know, to make my own band. So, if you're oh. watching this and you play an instrument, don't hesitate, man. Don't hesitate. Don't block your blessing. Um. So, what do you like better when it comes to performing or recording in studio? Performing. Performing. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything like that you got to do to get yourself right before you get on stage? Let me be for real. Absolutely. What? Go Why would shit. I want you to be anything other? I gotta take a shit. Okay. <laughs> no, I have to. no. So, well, I can't even believe I'm about to say this on camera. <laughs> but ever since I was younger, my friend and I always say, like, before we do something or when we get nervous, we feel like we gotta fart. But a lot yeah. of the time, that's really what it is. You gotta take a shit to get the nerves out. Yo, what? And then you go up there and do your thing. Or like sometimes Wow, you know how like they used to have like the thing in a magazine, like stars, they're just like us. I definitely feel like this is one of those moments. Like so you or like if I don't have access to a bathroom, I just yo, I just pray about it like God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, be with me on this stage, man. Woo! I'm getting nervous Jesus thinking about it. Just be head around my stomach so that it don't slip. Okay. That's a fact. So what was like the fan fave when you performed? The um, crowd fave. At the show recently? Yeah. It was between Sober and Secrets. Okay. Is there you, because you asked recently, is there usually a difference between what it was at this performance and what it usually is? As far as what I perform mm -hmm. with the songs? Mm -hmm. No. Um, well, this show recently, I performed something, uh, a song that's coming out soon. It's unreleased, but I kind of do that at most shows. I like to try to get in one unreleased sometimes, but other than that, no, the track list stayed the same. Okay, so you said Sober and Secrets was the faves. So now, I have another song. I mean, I have another game mm -hmm. to get into with you. Mm -hmm. um, because in Sober, you know, you poured your heart out on track. And you made it very clear, like, I'm saying all of this and I'm sober, so I'm standing on what I'm saying. Facts. I mean it. <laughs> and I know that a lot of times, you know, certain things you do, you might need a little extra liquid encouragement to do them. That's, that's true. So we're going to run down a short little list okay. and you're going to tell me whether you would do it sober, you would need a little liquid encouragement or you wouldn't do it at all. Okay. All right. All right. Performing at a sold out show. Liquid encouragement, please. And what you would tell the people your drink of choice. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Let me get a shot of Douce or, or, yeah. Well, when I'm with my team, it's Deli on because that's that's what they buy. Oh, so. period. You acting bad. Okay. Yeah, literally. So, it's going to, so we're going to do sober, shot, or won't. Okay. <laughs> sober, sober, shot, shot won't. won't. Gotcha. All right. Calling your ex for a sneaky link. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Well, okay, not the exes you be talking about, clearly, but like, if everything was copacetic and y'all just parted y'all ways, would you do a sober shot for a little, little liquid encouragement or you wouldn't do it at all? I wouldn't do it at all. Okay, so your answer is your answer, period. Right. Okay, getting in the middle of a dance floor. Oh, sober, I'm in there. You what? in there after we just was talking about you trying to open that. Okay, so you want to know something? This summer, I know you're going to be outside. And I better see at least one video, even if not on your page, one <laughs> tagged video, one something, where I see you busted a move. Cause you... Yeah, I actually got a funny one. Yeah, I'm going to probably post it tomorrow now that you said that. Okay, very. I'm going to be watching. Um, One night stand. Uh, shot or, or seven. <laughs> shot of seven Okay you might need a shot of seven for this next one too A threesome Mad shots <laughs> Seven or seventeen yeah, Okay nice. Singing on demand Sober Shooting a shot in public Sober Does it matter if you're shooting a shot to somebody who's just like 
at the spot or are you shooting your shot to a celebrity? If it's a celebrity, let me get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And me and the girl's parents for the first time. Sober. Sober? Yes. You know, some people, they be like, oh, let me take a quick shot just to ease off the nerves. Nope. So you're doing that 100% sober? 100% sober. Have you met parents? Yes. Do parents love you? They love me. They do? Yeah. Okay, you give me like my parents will love you. Oh my god, me and this mic have been fighting this whole time, y'all. So I am sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, in sober, you also said that you spun the block. Mm-hmm. I am not a block spinner. Uh, well, I lied. I I can be depending on the situation. Okay. Um, when you spun the block, it didn't give clearly at all. Do you feel like that really works? Like it's never the same to me. Once you spin the block, I don't really feel like the situation ever can like get back to what it was. How do you feel? I feel like it depends on the situation and the time spent apart and what changed between the both of you mm. during that time. Okay. Like if you guys agree to like call it quits and then get better and see what happens later, mm-hmm. then maybe it could work out. I guess it also depends on how it ended too. Cause I know yeah, that I could you. just be petty. And I, I know <laughs> like it's like, all right, we over it, but no, because really, why did you think I was like you was really playing in my face? Or like I'ma always yeah. try to like bring it up and I really hate that for me. But I maybe, understand. yeah, maybe I'm the problem. Okay. <laughs> um, so <laughs> how would you describe yourself in a relationship versus like in real life? I feel like I'm the same both ways. Like in a relationship, I'm outgoing, goofy. Let's go take a random ride, get some food somewhere, an hour away or something. And even when I'm not in a relationship, I'm the same way. Like, Okay. What's your, like, if you had to say, have you had your dream date yet? Like, have you gone on your dream date? I'm not going to lie. I never even thought of what a dream date would be. Really? All oh, right. So okay, let's think, okay, how about, let's think how about, about it now. What? what no, I haven't saying? because I'm not that rich yet. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's giving expensive. Okay, so what's the dream date now? Because it sounds like you got something in mind. Yeah. So I gotta what? Pick my what's girl the girl up? We gotta go get in a helicopter, or something to go to dinner that's on the rooftop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where's the <laughs> helicopter taking you? It's still to the staying restaurant. In. Like, 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 like. But are we in the city? Are oh, we in Bali? Know. Like you were saying, are we in? Are we even Damn, in? Damn, I don't right? know. I gotta really think about this. I don't know. Okay, so it could be in like wherever there's a like you see how like you got Times Square or whatever and it's mm-hmm. really nice like somewhere that has something like that but not Times Square though. Okay, um, a Times Square equivalent. The only one that I could really think of right now is like Tokyo, but I don't think that that's where your dream date. I wouldn't mind Tokyo. Okay, it, you were giving me Calm and Serene. I would love Tokyo for you, but you gave me Calm and Serene. Okay. So, something I find interesting, though, is when I asked you about your dream date, you said, like, you picking your girl up and y'all going. Yeah, yeah me taking so my personal date. So, is that because you play more of a dominant role, or is that just because that was the first thing that popped into your mind? Like, you... I feel like, cause it, I feel like it's because I play more of a dominant role, and I always like to be the one to do. Like, I don't really, I don't like to, like, for my partner to do so much. Really? Me. Yeah, like, just, you know, hold it down. Cook. You know, whip up some salmon or whatever. But other than that, like, Not whip up some salmon. I like to be the one to, to do the, the taking out. You know? Okay. So, what's like the most fire date that you've been on so far? Um, dang, dang. Really okay. Dang. All right. It's know. still time. Listen, like I say, out you outside all summer, so you got time. When we circle back to this conversation yeah, after you drop the project, <laughs> I'ma ask you what is given. Okay. Okay. So, um, since you've been making a name for yourself, do you feel like you've seen changes? You did kind of touch on this already. This damn mic. <laughs> You is did kind of touch on this already, but um, have you seen changes in like the nature of your relationships, like your platonic relationships? Um, a little bit, because you kind of said like you had to make like certain adjustments. Yeah, with the people around you. Yeah, like I be gone so much now, so that 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 alters things a lot. Okay, I'm not home often, so. I be on the road so much now. So. so do you feel like you have, are you a low maintenance friend or high maintenance friend? As far as what, like, 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 
I feel like low maintenance friends are those friends that you don't really have to talk to all the time. You know, like every time y'all link up, no matter how long it's been, like y'all always could pick up where you left off. Is nothing missing? Y'all always, like you can keep tabs on your friends, but they're not expecting for you to constantly reach out to them. Your low maintenance friends. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. have low maintenance friends? Yeah. Okay. That's perfect for your lifestyle. Um, I also see you post a lot of like uplifting spiritual posts. For sure. Um, does that reflect how you are in real life? Absolutely. I go to church every Sunday. And if I'm on the road, I'm definitely on my YouTube link watching church, man. I don't miss it. I love that. Who is sure. your favorite person to watch? Well, I, I watch my, my bishop. Oh, okay. Barbara. Like you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I haven't found a church home right now, but for right now, my girl Sarah. Sarah Jakes. It's also a guy, too. A guy in Atlanta. Oh, my goodness. What is this guy's name? I would have to look him up, but he's like okay. real popular, real famous. The biggest church in Atlanta is crazy. Okay, and I really like, too, that you are very outward with expressing your faith because I feel like a lot of times people suppress, like, their, whether it's Christianity or whatever religion they practice, um, as they start, like, getting bigger, I feel like they kind of shy away from expressing it. But I feel like I see you, like, repost a lot of stuff, like, you talk about it very openly, Um, and you make time for church every Sunday. I think that that's dope, too. Okay, so when it comes down to, like... This industry, you said it's crazy. Yeah. And I'm barely. Now, (laughs) before we dive into that, because I'm very curious, how do you make sure that you keep your peace of mind and, you know, you keep yourself balanced while dealing with the craziness of the industry? Can't expect nothing. Like, I don't expect anything. I've been to 100 meetings and I don't expect anything because that's the first way to be let down. And, like, I got a good team around me, you know, so. I'll rip my manager be telling me, like, all right, for me, this going to happen. That's going to happen. Like, this what that is. That's what this is. Like, we ain't going for this. We ain't going for that. So having my team has definitely been a big help because it's still new for me. Mm-hmm. It's all new to me. So so what's been the biggest shock for you so far about this industry? Um, They be lying, yo. That yo, was I mean, shocking. That's not a shock. That's You're not shocked? a shock, but, like, <laughs> it's the way they be lying. Mm. You know? Like, what they be doing? Like, bro. You don't got to get too specific. No, I'm trying to think about how I could word it. Like, I don't know. I had this one situation where, like, I had met up with them or whatever, like, went out to a different state or whatever. And, like, you know, of course, everybody says the right things or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it was more so, like, the way the way they had went about the after conversation, mm. the way they went about Just lying. Yeah. Like, why is you lying, bro? Like, Why you don't owe me nothing. I, like, you don't gotta lie, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, we here. I mean, but that's really kind of the name of the game, unfortunately. Yeah. You believe everything once it happens. What they say, half of what you see. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. The wine. Y'all, y'all <laughs> no. know what I mean, Fact. clearly. Um. So now when we dive into the craziness, is that what it is? Like, what else makes it so crazy from your experience so far? Um, People's audacity. <laughs> Had to mm. get a mic for that. Like, people literally thinking I'm about to get them everything I got for nothing. As if I don't, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm really not, like, bro. You know? You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. clearly, you know your word. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Does that go for, like, features? Does that go for performances? All of the above? No, I'm talking mainly for, like, right, well, this topic mainly on, like, the industry people. But as far as, like, features and stuff, like the execs. Really, you're talking about like the exact. Yeah, I would say industry. like the people below, exact oh, people okay. below them, who whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as features and stuff go, uh, I ain't gonna lie. I had some people ask me to get on with some songs that they know damn well I'm not gonna get them. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, okay. I'm not gonna get on them. Okay, so what is an example of a song? What's an example of a song like, that you would get on, and then what makes a song something that you would say I'm not getting on that? Like. Like, I would get on a rap song, like, I would sing a hook on a rap song, but I'm not going to go and do a drill song. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to go and do a drill rap song. I just feel like I don't, I wouldn't do that. That's not really your... You know, yeah, I don't feel like I would, yeah, like, you know? So you, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Would you try it out just for fun? And like, because sometimes you never know, like, like, Taylor Swift... Listen, Taylor Swift hopped on a song with T-Pain. Taylor Swift hopped on a song with T-Pain and low-key did her thing. I'm not going to lie. 
I mean, um, so you never know. Yeah, no. Nah, when I'm in the studio, like when I'm home, like so lately I've been like working on different beats just to expand my songwriting skills so that like you know I could write some songs for some people or whatever, but. As far as like putting out a song, I just feel like that would just confuse shit right now. Like, okay, I'm not, so I'm not gonna go and do that. Got it. So you're not trying to step too far out of your genre. At least not right now. Like I feel like people like like. Granted, I know that like some people will pay any price for a feature, but like everything is not worth it. You know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I can't just be throwing my name on anything. Mm-hmm. Like it'll it'll start to water down. My okay. Body. You know? So what's a song? What's an example of a song that you would hop on if it hadn't already come out yet? Like you would be a part mm-hmm. of it. That's outside of like the R and B genre that you you would sing a chorus to. Um, love Dior Banks by Lil mm. Durk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Dead single nut. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you ever listen to music like that? Like, damn, I could I could have yeah. hopped on this. Yeah, all the time. I feel like I feel like that's gonna come a time where I get on a song with Dirk. I'm gonna get on probably get on the song with. Herb, I'm not gonna lie, I will only do them because they're Libras, like me. So oh, that's God. another reason. But yeah, now nah, like I feel like I could I always wanted to, like, and I used to listen to a lot of music. John Legend, he's a guy that I like a lot that mm-hmm. he sings on a lot of rap songs. Okay. And that shit is mad, like it's just mad poetic. And that's another thing with you too. You don't really have that many like features. Mm-hmm. No. Um, so let's see. We did your top five already. Let's get into like top three artists that you would like to have a song with, like you would like to do a collab with. Uh, Meek Mill And they can't be Okay Meek Before you say your next two They can't be people That you're already listed In your top five I got you uh, Meek Mill Um, Music Soul Child Wait does it, can, oh, it wow, Wait it gotta okay. be art, can, can it be any genre Oh that's or it Okay like, oh. Give me three Now we're gonna go from three to five Three Out of your genre Two in Um, Three out of my genre Dirt Meek Mill and J. Cole. Mm. And in my genre, I would go old heads. Not old heads. You said like, music. Back in the day, I will go Music Soul Child and Lauryn Hill. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I can see that. Sure. I can see that. Okay. So you mentioned this project that you're working on. Let's talk about that. Yes, sir. What is this project? Do you have a name for it? Yeah, but I don't know if I'm. I don't know. Well, if we, I don't know if we're gonna give it out yet. I don't know if I should give it out yet. Uh, I, don't know. I personally I think you should because it's talk of the town, and why not talk about it? Um, I damn. I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble by fame. <laughs> all so right, like, how about this? I give y'all a hint. This is a safe space. Okay. So say say if you feel you know i'm yeah, gonna I say yeah i don't mind saying it now okay, it's coming it, out soon it's and, done. and, and it's if done. fame says that you shouldn't we'll just cut it out no worry all right so my project is going to be called art archives yes not archives but art archives. archives yeah i like that okay yeah so is that because this is incorporating some of the songs that you've had in a tuck or what's that about Nah, it's just i feel like all the music that's going to be on it it's it's like i'm coming out of Hiding, you know, like I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm being, being open, being honest, being vulnerable with things I've gone through, things I've experienced. So yeah, archives. You know, I like you on the gram, you go archive your post, you mm-hmm. go hide it or something, throw it away. Okay, yeah, I like that. that you know? Thank you for sharing that with us. No, for sure. By the way, so so what are the vibes that we can expect from this project? Um, definitely R and B, but there are gonna be some upbeat vibes on there, so that like y'all could see the range a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Keeping it, you know, my style, but giving y'all something that's more familiar to the ear, for lack of better terms, I guess. You know? Okay. And that's one thing I like, too, the range. Because like I was saying, Procrastination is one of my favorite songs. Because I feel like that's very grown and sexy. Like I said, it gives me Miguel yeah. vibes. But Pink is also one of my favorites. Um, yeah, not only because my color, my favorite color is Pink, but also because it brings me back to that time, like I was saying, when I used to listen to like that in your bag, just like. Teenage Young Love That's songs. Um, so, okay, when can we expect this project? You have a date yet or no? No date, but y'all going to get it in before August, after June, <laughs> maybe July. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, July is before August and after June, so that would be the perfect <laughs> the perfect time. Yeah. Okay, so summertime vibe. Yeah, I would say okay. so. I haven't really seen you post like snippets or anything like that. 
Yeah, not yet. You know, not yet. I don't want to give it to them too soon. How do you feel about snippets? I feel like they are good, but it could be a little difficult because if your snippet go off right now, but the song don't drop for a month from now, you got to hope that that same momentum you got now, you're going to have it when the song drop. Because it might be hard for that shit to come back around. So many songs have so failed good, by the hands of having a snippet that was much litter than their yeah, so, actual song. But I'm learning that as I go. So like the way I'm approaching this next with this next drop, I'm announcing it when they can have it within a few days reach, you know? And I like not that. A month reach. Like, not keeping the people 40. waiting. Not dra- dropping snippet after snippet after snippet with no yeah. song release. Love that. Okay, so what else can we expect? Like I said, we're halfway through the year. We still got six more months left. What else besides this project can we expect from artists? Um, Expect for me to just be outside, man. I got some, uh, like some more opportunities coming my way. Um. I'll be doing like my first festival soon, so that's exciting. Okay. Um, more shows and just giving y'all the content that y'all deserve. Um, still working on myself as an artist and you know healing and going through the motions. So y'all gonna see it all. I'm gonna work on being more open, more vulnerable. I'm gonna show y'all I can dance. Right. I'm gonna show y'all I love to paint. Mm-hmm. And yeah, man. Okay, so creativity for the rest of the year, putting yourself out there. I love that. Sure. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Anything else you want to let the people know before we wrap up? Um, if you got something you're going after, man, stay the course. Because, like, I know, like, with Sober Going Crazy, I probably think this shit happened for me overnight. But I put literal like, like, blood, sweat, tears, money. Like, this shit is not cheap, by the way, for those that don't do music. <laughs> mm-hmm. This shit is crazy. Um, but... Keep going, man. It's, it's going to happen. And just stay true to yourself. Like, don't try to alter who you are to fit in, bro. It's never going to work out for you that way. Why yeah, let's keep going crazy. Archives coming out. Yeah, archives coming too, archives man. Archives coming out soon. Okay, thank you so much for stopping by. It's I thank y'all for having me. I enjoy myself. Thank Talking you. Talking to you. Yes, thank likewise. You. And let the people know where to find you. Hey, y'all can find me anywhere. Just type in the artist with a dollar sign for the S. All socials. All musical platforms, you can find me there. The fucking artist. Yeah, the uh, oh shit, my fault. Yeah, so <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, it's T H E F C K N artist, straight like that. Period. All right, well, thank you again for coming. Thank y'all, man. And we'll see y'all on the next interview. Bye, y'all.